Hello everyone, Pallytub here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. We find our party inside of the Druid Grove yet again. But before we get into the meat of today's episode, there's something I'd like to clarify. In a previous video, we took down the Enlightened Ogre and looted the Headband of Intellect. And when I looted this, I immediately put it on to Kalark, because that brought his intelligence up from 8 to 17. The power of my mind has grown tenfold, and I feel that I will be able to serve Vlacketh even better as her smartest champion using the headband of intellect. Now, we could have given this to Lazelle, and yes, her spells would do more damage. But spells doing more damage is nothing compared to what my enlightened brain has come up with. Over the course of the last few hours, we have been transporting every explosive that we could find into the Druid Grove. And this place is nearly primed to blow. Now, in order to see just how enlightened this plan is, you must first see what happens if things do not go according to plan. Now, I've, jokingly enough, stolen the idol of Sylvanas in every playthrough we've done in a variety of different ways. I've never done it like this. Look what happens if we simply move up to the idol and take it. The time has come. Remove the outsiders. Look how horrible these druids are. First, they call the tieflings parasites because they cannot give them enough food. And now they strike them down just because one of their precious artifacts went missing again. This is not right. If you don't have enough food, maybe we should remove some of the... Wow, whoa. Maybe we should remove some of the druids. That's where I was going with this. Basically, he strikes this guy down, and then all-out war breaks out. And we cannot have that on our conscience. These tieflings are going to lose their lives to these druids as they run up these walkways. In fact, one thing you can't see already is more druids are moving into the center of the grove, and they are going to be fighting every single tiefling refugee my but my enlightened plan will remove this end the simulation bathe in my brilliance now there are a few npcs that are kind of off on the side doing their own thing and i'm gonna have to change that we're gonna cast minor illusion this is going to bring in everyone who is on the would-be outskirts of this explosion once they get into position i'm going to hit the lever freeze time right about here and then this part's really important if i hit an explosive barrel it could send the next barrel off and just throw it around and the explosions may not connect that's part of my enlightenment i know that if i shoot this one right here it will simply cause fire to spread very rapidly let's see it <laughs> Well, with that done, I think we can take the idol of Sylvanas now. <laughs> it may not look like all of these barrels exploded. They, in fact, are just artifacts. The explosion was so great that it managed to blow up without destroying the barrels somehow. And as you can see, if I help myself to this... <laughs> It doesn't cause a war anymore. This is a perfect example of if you don't leave one person alive, they will never share the story. No one knows anything bad even happened here. In fact, the ritual animation is still continuing as if the druids were still here channeling. Oh, the most enlightened plan I have ever seen. Hey, Mo. I had a feeling you'd be back. I have the idol, and it is all yours. Thanks. See you in Baldur's Gate, I hope. Now scram, before I get emotional. 
And with that, we have received the Ring of Protection. I've never looted this item before. It's going to give us plus one AC and plus one saving throws. We gave the sacred idol to Maul. She promised to repay us in Baldur's Gate. You know, when I made this character, I was a little unsure on what I wanted to do with this main conflict in Act 1. Do we side with the Grove or do we side with the Absolute? I decided I wanted to side with these tieflings, specifically these kids, and of course, the other tieflings here in the Grove, because the Dark Urge happened and I didn't get to see a lot of where their storyline goes. Those druids we killed earlier never leave the Grove, so I think my enlightened plan has truly come true. Now, um, the goblins tried to kill me last episode. Please excuse me, I'm gonna go kill them. Now seems like as good a time as any. If you guys are enjoying the content, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. We are inside the goblin encampment and Priestess Gut has already been taken down in the previous episode, which only leaves us with two more goblin leaders to take care of. Now you may be asking yourself, Pilot, couldn't you have just cleared the goblins out and then stole the idol of Sylvanas after that? And you are absolutely correct. There was no follow-up there. I did, yep, yep, you're right, yep, you're right. <laughs> there are some other things we need to do while we're in here as well. Volo has been captured. There's the prisoner. Don't go bothering my pigeon, he's mine. So I see, um, do you have any plans for your pigeon? Keep him safe. Listen to him coo. Till I get hungry or some such. What's it to ya? Well, I was thinking I could look after him. <laughs> oh, I was admiring him. I'd like a pigeon of my own. Then catch one on your own. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. We could make her give us the pigeon. We could make her do that. I'm done talking. Open your cage or you will be smited by Vlacketh, smartest warrior. We need a 10. We have Bardic Inspiration. This will be the easiest 10 we've ever gotten in our lives. We roll a two. Okay. Okay. Not the easiest 10 I've ever seen, but I will use Inspiration on it. We should have this. There it is. That's more than enough. Exactly enough. Excuse me. All right, all right. Calm down. I don't want no trouble. Here's the key. Pigeon's all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as they walk away, we'll just close the door next to Asterion Zell. The cage unlocked with the key. Uh -huh. Look at this. I'm quite saved. I guarantee the story of your daring rescue of my person will live on for eons. Mm, and just how will you be accomplishing that? Volo Themp Geda. Realm-renowned author, author, and tastemaker at your service. Was he expecting something? My books. There won't be a tavern in Faerun. You can enter without receiving a hero's welcome. We mustn't tarry, but I'd hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Kind of weird that he says once he's completed a book where you can find Volo's adventuring guide, like in the village that the goblins took over. Slip the yoke? How do you intend to do that exactly, Volo? An invisibility potion, my friend. A bit less refined than your mendacious method, but by God, it'll do the trick. Well, I'll go to my camp. We'll talk to you later. Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain. Oh, funny choice of words you got there. I have plans for Volo in the future, but by freeing him here, there he goes. We also gain access to an important item for my party. That is, of course, once we go back to camp and speak to him again. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. 
Happy to oblige. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> what do you know about the mind flayers? Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. Does he really? No doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. Perhaps we should find that. Make sure it gets squashed out. I wouldn't want more parasites roaming around the countryside. Now, you may think the friendship of Volo and Kalark might be a bit odd, but someone is going to need to write down all of the stories of my greatness. I fought one of those very mind players, Volo. Here, on the Sword Coast. Impossible. Where do you think I'm from? Not only have I encountered one, I have killed one. That... That can't be. I was captured by Mind Flayers before. I am lucky to still be alive. You're mad. But tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? Well, more like psychic transference? Curious. Elithids, their technical name, form a hive mind. One shouldn't be able to hear their dark whispers, unless... So I'm going to say nothing. I'm going to see how enlightened he is. Hmm. Are you familiar with the process of ceramorphosis? That is what happens when a mind flare parasite infects a living host. Now, this is actually normally not the first time you hear about seramorphosis, but for whatever reason, Gale was just like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you about that this playthrough. So for those of you that may be watching Baldur's Gate for the first time, what is seramorphosis all about? I can't attest to the specifics, but I do know that not long after insertion, the host, that's you, turns into a mind flare. As there's not a tentacle on your head, I can only assume you haven't been infected. <laughs> well, I have, in fact, been infected. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? Huh. Ridiculous. Is it? Is it so ridiculous? Uh... <laughs> Examine me and find out yourself. I don't know if I'm ready to take that plunge just yet. However, we will be doing that in an upcoming video, I think. Of course, utterly ridiculous, of course. Still, there'd be no harm in me taking a teensy look with her. I know all the signs. Oh, you're just inviting me. Just peer in your eye. I could quickly. Oh, my dear sweet God. Oh, no. Well, follow. I want to get rid of this thing by any means necessary. If we managed it, we'd have a specimen of incredible rarity on our hands. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. Oh, okay, so we're not doing anything right now. Okay, perfect, perfect. Volo has decided to remain in camp, having such a learned scholar near my may be useful. And of course, having a bard nearby to write all of my tales will of course also be useful. For completing this quest, we got the Blazer of Benevolence. When you inspire an ally using bardic inspiration, they gain temporary hit points. This is of course going to our bard, Astarian. It's time to level up our party. And this is a big one because we're getting a few feats thrown in here as well. Lazelle's up first. Her HP is going up to 36. She's gaining more level one spell slots. We're gaining a new spell. I'm a big fan of Thunder Wave. I actually have a plan for this already. That's perfect. And then do we want to swap out anything? I think I'm totally fine. We don't have any tier two spells that we're really looking to use yet. So I don't think we need to replace anything just yet. Now for my feet. Great Weapon Master is probably the most fitting, especially if I'm going to keep using these two hand great swords. It's going to make it harder to land my attacks, but when they do, they deal more damage. And if we kill a target off, we can then swing again with a another attack. Fighters can already swing a ton. Swinging even more sounds fantastic. 
for Kalark. We're getting some more HP, not as much as Azel. We unlock additional key points and get the slow fall. When you fall, you can use your reaction damage to gain resistance to the falling damage. And a new feat. This one for me is a no-brainer, but pay attention because our play style is going to change. We are taking Tavern Brawler. That might seem a little weird when we only have eight strength, but we got a plan for that. Don't you worry. We're putting our additional point into Constitution to get rid of that disgusting odd number and put a nice even number in there. Bard level four, 31 HP, new cantrip, new spell, and a new feat. We have an opportunity to replace a spell again. I gotta be honest, none of these are really jumping out at me. I suppose I'll go with Blade Ward. I don't know if that can be cast on others or if it's a self-cast thing, but taking half damage is basically what barbarians do. And we could definitely find a use for that. Now, as far as spells go, we do have some level twos here. I am a big fan of Crown of Madness. That one can be super fun. Heat Metal can also be excellent. I'm going to take Crown of Madness right now. And then for my feet, oh, I have no idea. I don't hate this one at all. If we take Actor, it's going to bring our Charisma up to 18, getting rid of that gross 17. It's also going to double our Proficiency bonus for Deception and Performance checks. Considering Asterion is the face of my party, being able to lie to people may come in handy. And I do quite a lot of performances with his music in town to set up some sneaky scenarios. I, I think that's good. I like that. Our wizard has their HP brought up to 26. They gain new cantrips, new spells, and a new feat. I'm gonna get Bone Chill for my cantrip. This could potentially make it so a target cannot heal. If we get someone low on HP, we just kind of cement that healing. Uh, I do have Crown of Madness on Gale as well. Setting two of those off means we're potentially making two enemies fight their allies away from our party. I think that sounds really, really good. Ah. Uh, we're definitely gonna need Misty Step here. Oh, I am a big fan of darkness. I do like it, but I could also find a use for Cloud of Daggers right now, I think. And Cloud of Daggers, from what I'm seeing here, is probably our best AOE option. We're gonna put this to good use really, really soon. I'm gonna get rid of Witch Bolt. One thing I didn't know about this ability is you can upcast it so the initial cast does more damage. But then the whole shtick of this spell is that you can recast it without consuming a spell slot for like 10 turns. It does use your concentration, but you can recast it. But even if you cast this as a level five spell, the recast damage is always gonna be level one. So I'm just gonna get that out of there now. We'll put in Cloud of Daggers. I believe I've already long strided for the day, so we'll add in Misty Step as well. And that's looking pretty well-rounded actually. I don't know what I want for my feet though, even a little bit. Tell you what, I'm kind of thinking about being a fire wizard. So if I take elemental adept fire, that means that we are going to n ignore the resistances that the target has. So let's say they take half fire damage. We're ignoring that and dealing the full. It's also going to make it possible for us n to not roll a one whenever we roll for damage with fire spells. We don't have a ton of fire spells in our arsenal right now, but I'm not super concerned about that. Obviously in the future, we have that looming fireball always ready in the distance, but we can also learn scrolls and like retain them as real spells on a wizard as well. It does take a little bit of money, which we don't have a lot of, but if I find like a scorching ray, which I, I, I know scrolls exist for that, we can just scribe those spells instead. For instance, I don't believe Gale has burning hands, so we can learn this spell for 50 gold, then prepare that spell like we learned it from our level progressions. As far as I know, only wizards can do this, and it's really, really cool. So I'm gonna get rid of Flaming Sphere. Since I have Crown of Madness, I can use as a concentration, or Cloud of Daggers I can use as a concentration. And then we'll pick up Burning Hands as like an offensive AOE ability. We also have Fire Bolts, so none of that damage is gonna be resisted. And we'll keep adding more and more flame effects into what we're doing as we go. Uh, excuse me, I got a plan for you. This goblin's going into the pit. Being arrested Attack. For 
I don't think it really matters. Those. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One goblin down. All right. I just saved our game. Last time we tried to see this cutscene, it was broken. If it's broken again, I'm just going to reload and we'll try to ambush these guys. It's a really cool cutscene, though, so I hope we can see it. Hey, it's working! I command you, corpse. Speak. Reveal truth to the absolute. So that's one of the mind players from the Nautiloid. A geek. A geek? Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. Do you know what he's trying to cast? turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. Hey, bud! You taste the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. The bile in his soul, gross. Eye for a brief moment, once again, you see the hog goblin bowing before the armored elf you'd glimpsed before. The elf speaks of the hunt for a great weapon and the rewards that will go to whoever finds it. The hobgoblin's eyes gleam hungrily. Guess it doesn't matter what you are. You're a true soul. And that's good enough for me. He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. Is he talking you shit? Ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, we're just committing, though. Okay. So, the Githyanki used to be slaves of the Mind Flayers before Vlacketh helped them break away. At least that's my understanding of the knowledge. If anyone could elaborate, elaborate on that lore a bit more down in the comments, I'd really appreciate that. But I know we have a big grudge with the Tentacle Boys, and that's even before the Nautiloid took us in. Do you ever talk with a dead squib? Now's your chance. I'm going to study the corpse and see if this is the one that tortured me. This Mind Flayer's build is smaller, its garb plainer. A fearsome creature even in death, but not the one that tormented you. Okay. And it too roamed the Nautiloid. It would have seen you, known you. Oh, less cool. Absolute says the dead Squiddy had a weapon. I reckon the killer nabbed it and scooted off to that looter camp. We find who killed it, and we find who took that weapon. So settle in. You suddenly feel a strange anxiety take hold. Uh oh. Your own, but that of the artifact you carry. Somehow, it's afraid. The artifact does not want to part from you. It does not want to fall into the Absolute's clutches. Leaving before the Mind Flayer can identify me might be a good idea. But I'm going to let the ceremony proceed. You choke on black smoke as the Hobgoblin bellows his incantation. I command you, corpse. Speak and say sooth. Lucan Ock, Alcohol Deck, Shulko Kank. I think he got it. Man, that's so cool. The hideous corpse rises, tentacles writhing. Wow. So the last time we tried to do this cutscene, it was like stuck in the floor. The camera was. The creature might recognize you as its killer. Under questioning, he might recognize me as his killer. Ugh. Well, we could just let it play out. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm going to kill this goblin anyway. If he knows that I'm his enemy through this, so be it. Let's see what happens. The other option is to, like, use your tadpole to jump into his brain and try to control the conversation. I've always done that. I've never just been an innocent passerby. Talk to me, freak. Who killed you? Well, I didn't do that. Responds, not in words but memories. You see a clawed hand open a holding pod, devoid of flesh, only darkness. Damn it, that tells me nothing. The memory fades and the corpse awaits the next. So it's not speaking, it's imp imprinting the image directly in your mind. Continue questioning. Tell me who killed you, freak. No games. Again, a vision comes to you. A memory seen through the creature's soul-dead eyes. 
You see a clawed hand opening a holding pod. The merc clears to reveal a face. Uh, Yours. Oh, did I do that? I can't be. You, you're no true soul. Um. Well, that's a mistake. I am a true soul. You remember? We we connected. That's a true soul thing right there. A hundred percent. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, yeah, see? Totally a true soul. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're a real true soul. I felt it. Yeah, me too. The corpse collapses. Silent once more. Wait, that was only two questions. No, I'm not done! <laughs> All of it. And nothing to show for the trouble but rotting squid meat. No answers, no killer, and no damned weapon. <sighs> the damned trow was right. Can't let her get all of that glory. Seems I ain't done with you. Report to the trow. Minthar is the name. She's right next door. She's mounting an attack on that blasted grove. Tell her you'll join her. Oh, about that. Uh, so consider it done. Praise the absolute. Praise the absolute. Just trying to blend in here. This weapon the cult is after. Do you think it's our artifact? I do, Asterion. I do believe it to be our artifact. Well, shit. Where did he go? Uh oh. Listen. Oh, oh, he's just on his throne. Okay. We're going to need to take control of this room. We cannot let these goblins out of here. I think the easiest way of doing that is to use the spider pit. So let's get our team in position really fast. All right, to get these festivities off of the ground, I'm going to be drinking this. It's an elixir of hill giant strength. It's going to take our strength from eight and increase it to 21 with Tavern Brawler that we just picked up. When you make an unarmed attack, use an improvised weapon or throw something, your strength modifier is added twice to the damage and attack rolls, which means our unarmed attacks are gonna be hitting like crazy if we get our strength modifier up, which we could easily do by just drinking this potion. Now, not only am I the smartest Gith Yankee that there has ever been, but I am the strongest as long as I hang on to these sweet potions. These are the nectar from the gods. We're gonna have to find a steady supply of these to last us through the entire game. Well, Lazel and I are in position and with my newfound strength, I could just pick up a goblin and throw him to the spiders. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Someone is one way to Attack! How's our initiative looking? Oh, pretty good. We'll throw this guy too. The spiders are coming over. In fact, I think I killed that guy with that throw damage. Yeah, he's dead too. You see, that's kind of the fun. My pushing damage now gets my strength added to it. So we could do a pushing strike here. Oh, sorry. I just hit him for 31 damage with a bonus attack. Oh my fucking God. Well, that's gonna end my turn. As you can see, Kalak is terrifying now. And the funny thing is, it's only gonna get better. I'm still using a staff as my main weapon. Soon we will be fighting with just our hands. Draw Ragslin moves up and tries to do big damage, and he does, connecting for 27 on his final attack. We turn around and hit him for 16. Now we see more of our enemies begin looming around in the corners. Uh, I should probably swap over to Astarian and let's get a heal sent over, if nothing else. We'll do a level two healing word onto Kalark, right as he's about to take damage, in fact, from this guy behind him, giving him some more of that HP. We also see Gale get pulled in the conflict. Uh, that was just a bonus action, so I still have a regular action I can use. Why don't we just go for a... Oh, this could be good. Dissonant Whispers. We could also just do a Vicious Mockery so this guy does less damage to us. A gift for a that wasn't even a good insult. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, we still technically have another bonus action, so I'll do a level one spell slot on Kalark just to get him back up in fighting form. I can't believe how hard he was hit with a single attack there. 
Uh, now, for Gale, we could be pretty aggressive and drop a Cloud of Daggers, but unfortunately, I think think the biggest threat of this fight is already over because we've we've taken out so many of the little dudes so i'm just gonna stick with a fire bolt onto draw ragslin unfortunately it does miss but gail's gonna continue to hold that side of the room now we see lazel move up and toss one of the goblins into the pit there you go little spiders eat up enjoy uh we're gonna try a push oh my god it worked Oh my god! 28 damage on the fall down, and now the leader of the goblins finds himself in a pit surrounded by spiders. We're gonna action surge and then move up to this novice of the absolute and try to end his life. Unfortunately, we rolled a one on that attack roll. Now Warlock Bolt is standing up, giving himself some temporary HP, and then casting a hex onto Astarian. I don't know how he could see him from below. Well, he can't see him anymore. Jor Ragslin still on the gr Oh, never mind. He has two HP. I thought he died. Jor Ragslin still on the ground gets web placed it upon him. Can I throw him? Not far enough. Let's just do a single staff attack. That's going to be 14 damage. And then I guess I just kind of oversee the festivities here. A lot of the work has already been done. We'll just stand close to the pit. Now, will the leader of the goblins be able to take down the spiders that are trying to fight back against him? That rage is gonna help him. That's gonna reduce all physical damage by half. We see a massive hammer swing. He killed a spider in a single turn. So we're not out of the woods yet. Is he gonna move up after that? It does not look like it. An archer from above, continuing to attack. Yes. Uh, we could put Crown of Madness on the little goblin here on bolts and have him go after his master. I do like the idea of that 70% chance to connect and it does. So there's gonna be at least a little infighting down there. Uh, I don't like where this guy is standing. So I, one option is to put a cloud of smoke onto him. So, you know, he can't move. The other option is probably the easier one. We'll just hit him with a cantrip. Oh, unfortunately missing. Unfortunately missing. Now, Lazelle can make it up there with a single leap with the strength in her legs and a beautiful hit for 22 damage. I guess we can't jump back. Just start moving. Now, the Crown of Madness is in place and we see an Eldritch Blast used against the Goblin Leader. He's gonna turn around and immediately do an attack of opportunity. The one remaining spider begins to fight back. Unfortunately, this looks like one of us is gonna have to get down there. Now, how does that work with me using my... I'm just gonna take the damage. You know what? This would be way better to do on Lazelle, but she's so far away. I just don't have any ranged attacks. You know what I mean? I'm scared to get down there. Really, we should be trying to hit this guy with elemental stuff right now anyway, though. I'm gonna throw a, a fire potion down there, an alchemist flame. That'll at least do a little bit of damage. He'll be burning for a couple turns, and then I'm gonna move mostly out of the way. Now, if he oh continues to move back, this is gonna become more and more of a problem. That spider down there taken down. Does he know how to open the gate? Because if he does that, we are gonna be in serious trouble. Is he out of range? He is. Oh God, that means I gotta get down there. That's 11 HP. Oh, fully prone. Not good, not good, that's not good. Uh, we see Gale move to the edge, shadow step down into the area beneath him and then cast the Cloud of Daggers. That will deal damage to him every turn, and we're gonna have to figure out our survivability over here. Let me tell you, it's not gonna be the easiest thing we've ever done. Uh, Lazelle begins to run back towards her allies, but he's so far away. Can she land a hit with a ranged attack? She has disadvantage, but she's gonna try. It is a critical miss. Now, if this guy turns around, Gale is gonna be in some serious trouble, so I have to get down there and hope that I don't also fall prone. Oh, let's see if we can do it. I'm gonna jump directly in front of Gale. Even if I do fall prone, I'll be the tar- Wait, I dealt damage landing on you? And it broke his concentration. Holy fucking shit. Holy shit. This couldn't be worse. Two fire damage. Oh, absolute power was dodged. Weakening strike does connect for nine. 
Uh, we gotta end this guy. We gotta end this guy real soon. Here's Firebolt. Five damage. He's also burning, so he will die on his turn no matter what. And I guess we might as well get Lazel down here too. She looks at all of the bullshit that we were doing and wonders why we didn't just take this spider web down. But she might be out of range for that. She may not even be able to... I don't think you can climb down with that. Hmm. I'll start running this way. See, we have a slight problem where we seem to have aggroed the front of house as well. Ranged attack onto Jorah Ragsglint. That takes him down. Let's see how these goblins respond to us being here. It's by pulling in more goblins. Okay, we're going to chug a potion. And this is going to be interesting because they have a lever over there to let them in. Are they going to pull the lever? No, instead it looks like they're going to attack the door. Okay, we're going to move up. My plan is to just kind of uh, brace the entrance here. Uh, we're going to use Gale's Mage Hand on the opposite side of the gate. And then just move Gale up to the corner here, I think. Uh, Lazel is going to continue running around. We literally aggroed everyone else in the building. We'll see how this goes. We can theoretically continue to throw people down here, and I don't hate that idea. It says I don't have enough movement. Let's go up. And we can just do a ranged attack right here since we can't seem to get in melee range. Two damage. And then I'm just going to run towards the pit to get ready to throw someone in. Gale's done with his turn. It moves all the way around to Kalark, who's going to chug another potion. And I'm going to move up center with the gate here to get ready for the next turn. Wow, these guys are coming in from literally every corner of this room. That sucks. We were doing so good keeping that fight contained, even though we left the area up until this point. This is when things got bad. Armor of Agathis being cast on one of these goblins. We're really going to have to just wait for this door to be opened. If they go and take the high ground, my plan is to throw them into the pit with Lazel. But ideally, I just open the gate, put a cloud dagger in the way, and watch the chaos unfold. Oh, they are casting spells through the walls, though. That's not good. We're going to do a level two heal on Gale. This is my final heal. Uh, still can't use the Mage Hand, which I find very odd. And even if I can at this point, it's going to take damage. So... What if you just... Can you shoot through this? Can you shoot through that? Not enough resources. Actually, it's because I used the healing uh, touch. Okay, we'll just back up. Gale, on the other hand... He's going to cast a Flame Bolt. Disadvantage on these attacks, unfortunately. That did not connect. We're going to fall back again. Lazel's going to pick up one of these goblins and toss them into the pit. Oh, it failed. Oh, my God. What an action. Big Bless. It's going to increase their accuracy a bit. And another of the goblins jumps in on the Mage Hand. Bro, at this rate, if they just keep stacking up there, I think we're fine. Uh, I am going to try to pull the lever. It worked! Okay, we can officially leave this area. Mage Hand, MVP, 10 out of 10. Wood Mage Hand again. This is a lot of guys, though. This is a lot of guys. So what we're going to do is put down some concentrations in this doorway and then try to just fall back from them. Clark's going to move up with a staff swing onto Warrior Bez on the left side. Then follow that up with just a single unarmed attack, and that's going to take that target down. I'm then going to use the rest of my movement to just enter the room as best I can, tuck into the corner, and we'll try to continue to bring these guys in. They're just dashing at full speed at this point, which is good. Now, for Gale, we're going to cast that Cloud of Daggers, in the only walkway these guys can take to get in here. So as they move in, they will be getting ripped apart by those daggers. On Now that it's Lazel's turn as well, we're going to try this throw again. And preferably, I want to get in a spot where I can aim for that cloud of daggers, but it doesn't look like we're quite there yet. Still, I can throw them as far as I possibly can. They hit the ground taking six damage and... <clears throat> Excuse me, let me see if I can move to the other side of this guy. 
and at least get him moving in the right direction too. We'll get a little bit closer over here. Astarian's not gonna be able to do much. Well, Vicious Mockery, the guy who's kind of bodying Clark over there, then we're gonna fall back behind this Tales wall. Gale needs to keep that concentration Please, like Mr. above every other priority in his life. So he's gonna try to hide as well. There's the cloud of dagger damage. That's 12 on this guy as he moves in. And the first thing he does, heal his friend. What an honorable goblin. Do it, do it, yes. Yes! Yeah, go ahead. The daggers are fine. Get in there. Kalark in the corner goes for a swing on That's a one shot. All right, feel pretty good about that. I guess I'll just keep holding here. I mean, I think we're fine. Beautiful dashes in, only three HP on both of these guys. There are starting to be a lot of, a lot of goblins in here. I still don't think I'm super worried. That Eldritch Blast from the high ground is probably the most dangerous thing. But we have Lazel almost in position to respond to that soon as well. This might look bad, but I think we're coming out on the right side of this. As long as Lazel doesn't die. She's, she's very, very isolated at the moment. Uh, we are going to try a ranged attack on the Devout. It missed, and then we're just gonna line up side again. Gale's gonna try the same thing with a fire bolt. The Devout goes down, and then Gale's gonna line a sight. Now on Lazel's turn, we are going to try. Let me move over to the left side of this guy. We're gonna try and throw into the cloud of daggers, and it looks like we have the perfect pixel to do exactly that. So that's gonna be a kill on that guy, and let's go ahead and second wind just to be on the safer side. Oh, come on in, guys! Yes! Yes! Go ahead! Oh, don't get cold feet. There you go. <laughs> now, on the turn of Kalark, watch in amazement as I do a uh, pushing attack actually wasn't that great. And the throw's not looking that good either. I can pick up this guy and potentially throw him onto the corner of that. Looks like that did work. Uh, now, let me just do a, I guess the kind of attack doesn't really matter. Just a flurry of blows in some capacity. <laughs> that was 27 damage. What? All right, he's dead. All right, 20. Wow, that's insane damage. Wow, at level four. Elders Blast being used again. Luckily, it's a critical miss this time. We've been dwindling the numbers of the goblins quite well throughout this fight. It seems as though we are not done, though. Many of them up on the high ground now. That's going to be specifically Lazel that can deal with that situation. Uh, we're going to do a ranged attack on Torturer Spike. It does not work. Gale's going to step out and try a Fire Bolt on the same target. It does work, and we're going to line this out again. Now, Lazel is going to jump over the gap in the middle and do a melee swing on the goblin caster. <laughs> Unfortunately, it missed. He tried to jump over the cloud of daggers and fell directly into the cloud of daggers. Just for trying to avoid it, I'm gonna move up to this guy and throw him into the circle. Perfect! Now we just hide again. We, oh, I took a took a little hit there. I'll drink a potion. <laughs> I got a little too close. Oh no! Nine damage being done to Kalark. He only has two HP remaining now. Lays out in the tussle with the remaining enemies. Oh shit! Concentration was just broken by that arrow. This guy got vision of my party down beneath them. What a champ! He is the hero of the goblins, right? Now, Lazel's gonna pick up this goblin and throw him onto the torch. Will we get some fire damage out of this too? Let's find out. No, but <laughs> it was still pretty good. It was still pretty good. Kalark, seeing the new goblin on the ground next to him, runs over with the staff and plants it deep within his skull. Clark dodging the Eldridge Blast as well, keeping him alive. Uh-oh. Oh, that was lucky. 
That's an AOE spell. Very lucky we didn't take damage from that. Vasarian, can you use your bow and shoot up, maybe? It says path is interrupted from here, but what, what if we make it over here? Do you think you could shoot one of these targets from above? 65% chance we shoot for eight damage. Fantastic. If he could do that, that means Gale can too. It's like I forgot that I could look up while I was in here. Beautiful. Four more damage being done. We're then going to move up on Lazel and with a throw action yet again toss this caster onto the floor of the spider pit and then I'll try to get closer but unfortunately that's as far as I can go that'll end the turn of everyone there now Clark once again sees a target ready for the whacking and he takes the whack I'm gonna line of sight so I don't take damage from this guy again he's probably gonna run for Lazelle, no, instead opting to just completely run away from the fight. Can't say I blame him too much. Unfortunately, it seems like I'm pretty slowed. Uh, I'm gonna try just a burning hands here. It's a nice fire AOE. 13 damage. Parasite in that corpse. Yeah. <sighs> and we cleared out two of the goblin fights in a single combat encounter. That's one way of doing it, I guess. We're going to use one of Astarian's new spells. It's called Song of Rest. It's just going to give everyone a nice short rest as if we still had a charge here. But of course, we've been out of these charges for a long time now. We have one more fight we need to do, and I'm not giving up until all of the goblin leaders are dead. So how are we going to take down Minthara when we're as weak as we are right now? Well, first things first, I think we need to take down the reinforcements. So I'm setting up a bit of an ambush on the eastern side of the goblin camp. Why can't you reach the destination? It's a straight line. Walk there. Uh, I'm going to set up a minor illusion on this corner to draw these goblins. And when they're grouped up, we'll see if we can ambush them. Uh, I'm going to stick it as far into the corner as I can. So hopefully they don't look over here. Everyone is sneaking at the moment, though. Wow, that was so close. Well, while he is distracted, Kalark, the strongest and smartest of all of the Githyanki, is just gonna pick up this goblin and throw him into the pit. We never entered combat, and I'm gonna move back over here. Oh, we did enter combat. One of them saw me do that. Funny enough, it's only one of the two goblins standing here, though. As they dash forward, they consume their action. So I'll just move up and throw them into the pit. Another goblin has seen me now. Oh, that wasn't a pit throw, but it was still a death throw. Holy crap, that's a lot of damage. Uh, if he sees me here, he's gonna shoot. So I have to second wind dash. Or, excuse me, that's not what it's called. Step of the wind dash. Second wind is the fighter healing. Let's not get too confusing. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to sit back here, which is going to cause him to dash. He's going to move up to the same... Uh, not quite the same spot, actually. Uh, I'm going to main action hide and move up. That'll make him look for me. Oh, didn't see that coming. He summoned in a warg companion in the other room. Well, when he looked away to do that, he freed up this sight line for me... That's a one shot. I'm creeping up with these illusions, trying to catch someone in the room. And then if I can get them to look at that illusion, I can put down another illusion that should bait them further. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. We're in a fight. That's totally fine because you know who is not in a fight? Kalark. He's just going to move right behind this goblin. Wow, he has 31 HP. That is a lot. Uh, let's just go with a flurry topple. Okay, he's almost dead. I'll just follow that up with another swing. <laughs> okay, all right, dude, all right. Do you think I can get the scrying eye to come over here? I feel like that would be really helpful. Just remove that thing. Scrying eye seems to be immune to this. Next guy I can get is kind of far inside. It's another goblin boss, though. There is a chance that I could, like, fire off a ranged attack at one of the scrying eyes and one-shot it. 
But if we don't one-shot it, then I am in a lot of trouble. Wow, look at that. Oh, that was close. Scrying eye is... Down. That's big. That's big. With the scrying eye down... I might be able to grab this goblin in the back and not Minthara. Ooh, that's gonna be difficult. Let's see if I can grab him at all. They weren't respond. Only Minthara's responding? Oh shit. Hey, Minthara, hello. <laughs> you suck, vicious mockery. Bye. Bye. No, thank you. No, thank you, dude. She's gonna misty step further into the room and cast hold person through a bookshelf she has no business seeing through. Is the rest of my party already in position? Let's get Kalark up here. Let's get Lazelle up here too. This is gonna be a great ambush on the corner. Uh, Gale should be doing fine as well. We'll bring him over to the right. This is looking like a good ambush at the moment. We're going to make it even better by moving into this room, closing the door, and sneaking as our main action. This gives them a little uh, outline of where they think I am now, but they don't know for sure, which means she's going to go over there and investigate it. When she does, surprise, surprise. Clark was right here all along. Not quite how I wanted to go into the turn order there with the goblin moving around the corner, but you get the idea. It was mostly successful. Uh, Lazel just entered in the turn order as well. We are going to uh, Vicious Mockery. And then run back towards our group if we can. Perfect. Uh, I'm then going to have Kalark just enter melee range here, and we're going to start off with a toppling attack. Looks like we got a critical hit. We did 24 damage there, but did not topple the target. I'm gonna follow up with a melee swoop. <gasps> oh my god! Lark, dude! Oh my god! Your damage is insane! Um. Um, Gale's here. He's gonna firebolt before she kills me. Okay, didn't quite kill her, but still off to a pretty good start. Uh, Lazelle with melee weapon in hand, please. Start ripping and tearing. That's a miss. Uh, probably action surge here. I think this is pretty important. I'm swinging. Only 25% chance to hit. Very unfortunate. Will vic Vicious Mockery be enough to kill Minthara? Man, I really wanted to kill her with a joke, with an insult. How funny would that be? We're gonna regular swing Minthara. That was enough to kill her. And now we're going to do a toppling attack on the goblin. Wait, that killed him too. Oh my God, our damage is nuts. It might be. Strange power resonates within the corpse. It calls to you. Follow your instincts. Don't be afraid. What does this mean? Your limbs move of their own accord. There's something of value here. Something your mind craves. Why I don't like that. Memories go to waste. The tadpole has absorbed it all. Its experience could nourish you. Strengthen you. Let your body guide you. Welcome the tadpole's influence. I think as a Githyanki, I would want nothing to do with anything the Mind Flayers have anything to do with. Um, my tadpole is toying with me. I'm going to use all of my strength and attempt to resist it. We have a plus six <laughs> because of the elixir. I think we got this. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yes, use your inspiration. Kalark! You're better than that! Oh my god, Kalark! Kalark, what are you doing? I'll use all of my inspiration on this if I have to. There we go. 22. First try. The, the tadpole breaks free of its deceased host. Your mind is your own again. For now.
seems very weary of that, like trying to process You're what just ready. happened. It's all right. Well, just like that, all of the goblin leaders taken down in one fell swoop. There's some really good gear on this body and on Dora Ragslin's that we missed out on in the last playthrough because both of those guys ended up falling into a pit. Now, Minthara is a character you can get as a companion, and I know a lot of people like this character a lot. We will be following Minthara and her storyline on the next playthrough when we follow the Absolute. Oh boy. On Dror Ragslin's body, we find a Mind Flayer Parasite specimen. This one is a true soul parasite. It can enhance you. No. It can absorb its potential. No. Open your mind to it. You already know how. Absolutely not. Keep the parasite out. You are not ready. That's all right. But try to overcome this resistance sooner rather than later. It will make things much easier for you. We also find a key to a treasure room and the Faith Breaker, which is a Warhammer. I think it looks really cool. I don't think it's the most useful weapon out there, but it's not that bad. Past his throne in the back of the throne room, that key goes to this iron gate, which is the biggest stockpile of goblin loot that they have. This is all from the raiding they've done. We get 500 gold from that, some Ons and Eds, Infernal Iron, as well as the Amulet of Salune's Chosen, which Gale can absorb, the Gloves of the Growling Underdog, and the Spring Step Boots. That's gonna do it for today's episode, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. The Goblin Leaders have been taken down, but there's still someone in the prisons that we need to set free. See you guys again very soon.